On my channel, I use Minecraft commands to add cool things to the game, like custom horns, warden weapons, and cursed blocks. These things can take hours of programming, but there are a lot of cool things you can create yourself using just one command in a single command block. So today, I'll be showing you how you can add your own features to Minecraft even if you've never used commands before. Every command in this video will be in the description if you'd like to copy and paste them into your own world. Alright, let's get started. The first command will show you how to create custom snowballs that explode, place blocks, or summon a swarm of angry bees. But before we do that, we have to make sure we can actually use command blocks in our world. When making a world, you have to make sure cheats are enabled so that you can use commands. You also want to disable command block output, as our commands will be running 20 times every second, and keeping this enabled will spam the chat. Once you've created your world, you'll have to press T to open the chat, and type slash give at s command underscore block. Alright, now we can get on with making some snowballs that pack a punch. The most powerful command in Minecraft that you're going to see us using a lot in this video is the execute command. What it allows us to do is to find different objects in our world, like snowballs, arrows, dropped items, animals, and even you, and make them do different things. Right now, we want to find a snowball and make it explode when it hits the ground. So our command will be execute at at e, which means every entity, and in brackets, we'll say type equals snowball. This makes sure we only run the command on snowballs, that way we're not making any pigs explode. We also want to make sure it only explodes when it hits the ground, otherwise we'll be throwing snowballs that blow up in our face. So we have to make sure it only explodes when it's not in the air. In other words, unless the block beneath it is air, it will explode. So we'll type unless block that is zero blocks east of the snowball, one block below the snowball, which is typed as negative one, and zero blocks south of the snowball, air. Now our command will only run if the block beneath the snowball is not air. If the snowball lands on grass, explosion. If it's cobblestone, explosion. If it's a diamond block, unfortunately, still an explosion. Now the last part is to actually make this thing explode. So what's cool about the execute command is that at the very end, we can type run to run a second command inside of our first command. We'll have to use a command that makes something explode. So what can I think of in Minecraft that already explodes? Oh. Right, TNT. We can just type summon TNT and presto, our command is complete. Before we exit this command block, however, we have to make sure it is set to repeat. That's what makes it run 20 times a second. We can also either change this to say always active or just make sure our command block is in fact powered by redstone. In my case, I'm just gonna keep it always active. Hit done, chuck a snowball and watch the fruits of your labor unfurl in a satisfying cloud of explosive success. This is already fun on its own and I'm sure you'll have a field day digging massive tunnels down to bedrock with snowballs, but the best part is that we don't just have to summon TNT. If you wanted to, you could summon a cat or a dragon, or this is a little more complex, but you can also summon a swarm of bees with one command. Isn't that nuts? And we could even use the set block command to place a little layer of snow wherever the snowball falls, almost like it's breaking into a pile on the ground. Very nice. You may already know that using a name tag to name a mob dinner bone will flip it upside down. This is incredibly exciting and silly, but you know what would be even more exciting and silly? If we made every mob in the world flip upside down. To do this, our command will be execute as at e, this time we're using as instead of at, because it doesn't matter where this command takes place, just that it changes the name of the correct mob. And then we'll type run data modify. This command can be used to change certain things about a mob, like how much health it has, whether or not it's a baby, and of course, what its name is. Next, we'll type entity at s, with at s meaning self. Finally, we'll type custom name set value dinner bone. We have to use all these quotation marks and backslashes because it helps prevent the game from getting confused when storing text inside of a mob's data. Now we make this command block repeat like the last one, and presto! This is a video all about how your mobs got flipped, turned upside down. We can also make another command block that has type equals sheep in brackets after the at e, and change just the names of the sheep to Jeb. So every sheep you ever encounter is a rainbow sheep, though good luck trying to figure out what color wool they'll give you. You could also set every mob's health to 1 so that Minecraft is in super easy mode and every monster can be slain with a simple punch. That's one way to speed around the game. Mm. 
If you want to use commands to take your adventure maps to the next level, this next command is extremely powerful. It will allow you to easily place a special pad anywhere that can give the player a potion effect, clear their inventory, or teleport them up like an elevator. The command is execute as at A, meaning all players, at at S, so that the command is looking in the location of each player. If the block beneath the player is Lime Wool, run effect, give at S, jump boost for one second with a power of five. With this command and a repeating command block, you will get jump boost every time you step on a Lime Wool block which could be used to help you reach high on places. Add another command block that makes light blue wool give you speed, another that makes red wool give you regeneration, and one that makes orange wool give you fire resistance, and now you have the tools for an entire adventure map just waiting to be built. Instead of a potion effect, you could also use clear to clear the player's inventory, or use teleport, zero blocks east, eight blocks up, zero blocks south, to make an instant elevator. Chain a few of those together and you can scale your skyscrapers in no time. You could even change the block detection to be two blocks below the player instead of one block below. So you can hide these pads under the floor and turn it into an invisible trap that explodes when someone walks over it. When you break the bottom block of a tree for the very first time, you're probably a bit confused how it just floats there. Floating trees are incredibly unrealistic, so for many years, people have made mods that cause the whole tree to break when you mine the bottom block. However, with modern commands, it's actually possible to recreate this effect with one command block. First, we'll execute at add E, and in brackets, type type equals item, which finds every item that's been dropped on the ground. Then we'll put MBT equals item ID Minecraft oak log. NBT stands for name binary tag, which is basically the information stored inside of every item, block, and animal in the game. When we were changing the sheep's name to be Jeb earlier, we were changing its NBT data. This makes sure we're only running the command on items whose NBT say that they're an oak log. If block above is an oak log, run set block, one above, air, destroy. By specifying the set block command as destroy, it'll actually mine the log and drop it as an item. So basically, you'll mine the bottom block of a tree, it'll drop an item, and then that item will break the log above it. Then that log will drop an item, and that item will break the log above it. So on and so forth until the whole tree falls. Set this command block to repeating, and it's time to fell some trees. You can copy this command for every tree in the game, replacing both instances of oak log with birch log, spruce log, jungle log, and so on. Dropped items also have a tag called pickup delay. So what we can do is we can detect the MBT of a dropped TNT block with a pickup delay of zero and summon TNT. So every dropped TNT item becomes a little time bomb. Oh, maybe I did the command wrong? Let me go check. Had enough explosions yet? Hopefully not, because the last command I have for you will allow you to punch mobs and make them burn, fly away, and of course, explode. Once again, we will execute as at E, and in brackets type NBT equals hurt time 10S. Hurt time is an NBT tag that determines how long a mob should be read when they're punched. It turns to 10 the moment after they're hit. Then we'll run data modify entity at S again, but this time we'll set fire to 80. This will set them on fire for 4 seconds, as there are 20 game ticks per second, so 80 ticks would be 4 seconds. Set that to repeating, and now you have Fire Aspect Fists. Why enchant your sword when you can enchant yourself? You can also change the command to give the mobs upward motion, and it'll be like your fists have knockback. Or if you wanted to keep things simple, just summon TNT and every mob becomes a very dangerous pinata. And that's all! Hopefully you enjoyed watching and learned a thing or two about using commands. Let me know if you'd like to see a follow-up to this video about optimizing some of these creations with more than one command block. Maybe this can be the start of a sort of Crash Course to Commands series. Once again, all of the commands used in this video will be in the description for you to copy and paste, and modify if you so please. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.